All right, Wesley, you, uh, you're asking the right question, so that's a good start. I like that. Um, hold on a second. Let me pause this. I have my computer in front of me. Um, it's an outdated computer, so I can't make videos on it or anything like that, but I'm going to read your comments and answer them best I can. All right, your first question was, what do I think happened to Selena? Um, I answered that one best I can. I, honestly, I think you guys got a serial killer up there in Hardin area, and I think he's been hunting there for 10 years or more. Um, I do have a theory about a, a man in a red stepside pickup, 1960s build, maybe 1950s, I don't know. Um, and this is just because uh, I broke down on the Little Bighorn River in my Corsica a few years back. And this man gave me a ride back to Harden, and he wanted me to perform sexual favors. He was trying to hand me some dirty magazines and have me touch myself for his own entertainment. Um, it was broad daylight, and I didn't end up doing it, and... He was pretty pissed off when he dropped me off, but nothing happened to me. I'm pretty sure at his age, he was probably scared to mess with somebody like me. Um, but I'm going to get to your other questions here. It says, you were arrested and you have been seen as a suspect. Um, you're referring to Natalie Bollinger's case, obviously. Um, I wasn't arrested in the Natalie case. I was really arrested um, later on. What happened in Natalie's case is that she was suicidal and insisted I go to Virginia or she was going to kill herself and then she ran her car into a tree. So I made sure that I went to Virginia. Um, her sister wanted me to stay behind where she worked which was the cricket store in Chesapeake, Virginia and they invited me to do a bunch of really fun stuff. We went to Virginia Beach at their request we went to Elliot's Coffee Grounds on my birthday. Um, but basically, Natalie had a really fucked up dad. She had a, really a, a fucked up family. They're all a bunch of druggies. From her stepmothers and her mother to her dad. Her dad actually had her selling drugs when she was 13. And it was a really messed up situation. I didn't start hanging out with her, though, until she was 18. Um, <clears throat> Boulder police, they, they're hobo hunters, and I was homeless in Boulder, and I had hurt my back, uh, moving a gun lathe, and couldn't walk a block. Natalie came and rescued me from that. So when I went to Virginia at her request, um, on my birthday, it was really hot, and I got dehydrated, and that was the last time that I saw Natalie. Um, on my birthday, we went out to Elliot's Coffee Grounds, and her mom found her heroin while we were at Elliot's Coffee Grounds, and that had nothing to do with me, but it had long-lasting repercussions. Also, her and her sister were fighting over a boy, and how that broiled over into my stuff is not my business. Anyway, um, long story short, I got stuck outside of her house in my vehicle, and a car narrowly passed me. I was going there to explain to her that the broken phone that her sister gave me for my birthday was, well, it was broken, and I was arguing with a couple of racist assholes from uh, a place called Bozeman, Montana. Um, one of them was a guy named Tyler Frerichs, and another one was a friend of his, and his friend, Tyler, gave this friend my phone number, and me and him had been arguing on my new phone. Um, and this guy was typing a bunch of stuff, so I was typing it back. Well, it was my first smartphone, and it was basically remembering everything that I was typing. But it was also broken and did whatever it wanted. That phone just sucked. So when I went to explain to Natalie what was going on, um, my car got stuck in the road, and I honked my horn, and... That way nobody would run into me, and 
Anyway, ultimately, I ended up leaving there. Well, she had claimed that I stalked her, and then they claimed that I had threatened their family, and then that rumor got out of hand. They didn't say anything more than that. They didn't have to. Um, if you go back to the very beginning of Natalie's post, you'll see the exact same mentality start up. I didn't stalk her, and I needed her to let those people know. Just tell the truth. But the thing is... Those rumors worked into something that they weren't, and I was ending up getting treated like I was a child molester or a rapist or something like that. I'm like, no, not even close. So uh, at first, I tried to get a hold of Natalie and Alicia and her sister to get them to put a stop to it, and they wouldn't. So I went to the police, who didn't care. So I went to my friends for help, and they just kept on blowing me off. Well, I couldn't see my loved ones in Boulder because I was being threatened, harassed, and assaulted every time that I went there. And see, that's where I knew Natalie from, is from Boulder. Um, so in December of 2017, this is after a year of this bullshit, um, my roommates had stolen all of my money because I'm disabled. Um, they stole all of my disability money. And um, I was tired of not being able to see my loved ones, tired of having to live with people who were abusing the shit out of me. They weren't physically abusive until the day that I left, though. Um, but I exposed Natalie's dad as with an email that she had sent me in 2016. I'm like, if I'm going to be treated like this, I'm going to expose the people who actually do this shit. And I exposed him. And I had been trying to get a lawyer for a while by that point, but it wasn't working out. And a guy named Jeff Ritter, who was my therapist, and a lady named Kara Heller, who was my case manager, they were supposed to be helping me get a lawyer so that I could take Natalie to court. Well, I they were very slow about it and I was tired of being abused and Christmas was coming up and I just wanted to go to Boulder and see all my loved ones. So uh, when I exposed her dad, at first I, I got a hold of her mom to let her mom know what was going on and how I was being treated and her mom didn't care. So I exposed Ted um, with Natalie's email and then she uh, offered to meet me to put a stop to it. Well, instead of meeting me, it was a protection order. And for probably the 20th time, maybe not 20 times, but quite a lot, I had tried to tell the police what was going on. But the police officer who showed up, his name was Officer Michael West. He didn't care. And anyway, two weeks later, Natalie got shot in the head. Um... I thought it was her dad, or Tim Beeson, her ex-boyfriend. Um, and that's why I was a suspect. As far as being obsessed with Natalie, it's not obsessed with Natalie. It's obsessed with having my life back. See, rumors like that destroy a man's life. People harm a man for doing things like those. And I didn't do those things, so I don't deserve that kind of treatment. Her sister knows I'm telling the truth, but the police did everything in their power to cover up their own wrongdoing, which allowed the Bollingers to get away with whatever they wanted. Their friends and family threatened and harassed me and threatened to kill my friends and family and all sorts of fucked up shit. So uh, by uh -huh. the beginning of January, um, this is only a week or so after her death, um... The police weren't listening to me. I had been made homeless because Natalie died. My, The people I was staying with didn't ever pay me my money back, and they kicked me out, and they kept all my stuff, and it was pretty messed up. Sorry, that phone number is somebody who's been harassing me all day. I, I get a lot of those. Anyway, so... um. I grew up in the system, and then I was homeless, so I know quite a bit about who's easiest to victimize, because I'm easy to victimize. Um, 
I was arrested because uh, I was trying to find Natalie's killer. And I was in contact with one of her stepmoms, and I went to St. John's. And somebody had a police officer call me from Broomfield, and I spoke with him, and he offered to meet me. And this is after I'd been harassed by the Boulder Police for five days straight. They kept on separating me from everybody who was willing to help me, but refused to take a report about any of the people who were assaulting me or threatening me. So when this officer from Broomfield didn't show up, he sent the Boulder Police Department instead, and an officer named Waylon Lolotai, W-A-Y-L-O-N-L-O-L-O-T-A-I, was one of those officers. I was trying to do what the Broomfield officers had asked. They wanted some information, and I had been prevented from getting that information to them. Um, the Boulder Police obstructed justice. They also assaulted me for being suicidal is their excuse but the thing is i was trying to get information for the broomfield police and the border police they they don't give a fuck all these people had seen on the news all of this stuff about how terrible a person i am so everybody wanted to be the one to catch the terrible sean schwartz who killed natalie bollinger but the fact is she was killed by joseph michael lopez he shot her in the head um let's see why so that covers why i was arrested and why i was seen as a suspect um do you think it's because you post so many videos and seem to know more info than a lot well i know a lot of info because i keep track of it natalie was a friend of mine as soon as she disappeared i posted a missing persons video i offered her all the money that i had to try to get her somewhere safe She's not the only person I've done this for. I've spent most of my life helping out single mothers, and <clears throat> it's not easy. Um, let's see. Also, why were you obsessed with Natalie? I wasn't obsessed with Natalie. I was obsessed with being able to see my loved ones without being threatened or assaulted. I just wanted to see my older brother and Mobley and Christine and, by the way, none of these people are a part of my life anymore because of what happened to Natalie. Um, what I was obsessed with is getting people like Tim Beeson to leave me the fuck alone. To get Maddie Boa's meth buddies, because, I mean, there's meth everywhere in the United States now. I was trying to get her meth buddies to leave me alone. Sorry, my battery's running low. Um, and still to comment on her page when she clearly did not want anything to do with you. Well, that's the thing. I didn't want anything to do with them when I left Virginia. I just wanted to leave it behind me and go on with my life. But the fact is that I wasn't allowed to walk away. When I went back to Boulder, people wouldn't leave me the fuck alone. When I went back to Chapel, Nebraska, I had people harassing me on the internet over it. I'm like, hey, Natalie, put a stop to this. Call off the dogs. Now, this is stuff that I've been showing the evidence of this for over two years now, but the problem is I can't get the police to take a look at it. And then there's these Natalie Bollinger groups that are actually Sean Schwartz hate groups. They don't care about the truth. They just want somebody to blame. They want somebody to hate. That's what hateful people do. And I hate being treated like that. I hate being separated from my loved ones. I hate my life but that's not going to stop me from bringing awareness to all these missing people especially after going up to Hardin Montana and finding out from John Nomi and Mary Lyon shows and Lila Mountain Sheep I mean it's it's a fucked up situation y'all got going on up there um I continue to comment on her video to this day because that whole, or on her last post to this day because it, the whole thing is slander. I mean, almost all the stuff that she was claiming is, a lot of it is true, but it's also stuff that she asked me to do or her sister asked me to do, and she didn't write that part down, which is why I'm so pissed off. I still can't see my loved ones over this slander. The media blackballed me. The police don't give a shit. And I have been through hell for it. Um, 
says, I'm not targeting, targeting you, but everyone is a suspect. Can't let nobody slide. I agree with you. Now, as far as Natalie's case goes, the guy who killed her got busted. He's in prison for 48 years. Um, her sister has actually disappeared twice since Natalie died, and both times I posted a video about her disappearing. There's a, a lot of laws that I broke. And I'm proud of those laws because they save lives. Um, as far as a suspect goes, I'm in Chapel, Nebraska. I don't have a vehicle. I have no way to get to Hardin, Montana. But I understand why. And that's the thing, too, is that the Missing Women of Hardin, Montana video that I made, that was last March, I believe. I mean, it, it was almost a year ago. And only about 30 people had seen that video. When Selena disappeared, I knew that uh, I could use all of the hatred towards me to try to bring light to the situation and get people actually looking. So uh, that video that I made last year, it's had almost 10,000 views in less than 48 hours. I'm hoping that that'll help to bring light to your situation there in Hardin, Montana and the surrounding area, as well as indigenous women all over. I mean, it, this isn't just happening in Montana. This is happening in Reservoir.